Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Motive to be Productive. I'm your host, Daria, and today I'll be speaking with Ms. Talia Colon Garcia. And okay. I would like to welcome her to our show and thank you for accepting my invitation, Talia. So please, please introduce yourselves to our dear audience and we'll start from there. Of course. Um, so my name is Talia Colon Garcia, as you mentioned before. Um, I'm 19 years old. I was born and raised in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, and I'm right here um, in Puerto Rico ever since the pandemic started, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I miss Teen World, Puerto Rico, and when I was younger, I, I also won this pageant called Miss Tropical Beauty as well. Um, I'm currently studying at the University of Southern California, and I'm part of the BFA acting program for stage, screen, and new media. Fantastic. So going to our next question, I would like to ask you, what made you interested in pursuing acting? I think, hmm, ever since I was a little kid, I, I don't know why, I would always try to participate in every activity that was posted at my, my school ever since I was a little kid. Um, and I remember just watching plays and seeing all these students that I knew playing as the leading role or just singing, dancing on stage. And I would always tell myself, oh my God, I want to be on that stage. I want to be part of that. So when I was like in sixth grade, I did my first play. And ever since then, I started to further grow that passion towards acting. But I wouldn't say it's solely based on, on watching those plays in my school, but also ever since I was a little kid, I would always go to the movie theaters every Sunday with my family and we, we would watch a movie every single Sunday. I'm not even lying. And I remember every single time I would see those actresses like Angelina Jolie, Scarlett Johansson, and the way they would use um, gestures or, or their faces and not say anything, but being able to cause an impact in me and to feel a certain type of way. And even though I knew that that wasn't them in real life, that that was only a character. And I started to grow so fascinated with that and how they're able to impact the audience to change their minds and opinions towards certain situations. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So can you tell us your feeling and experience when you did your first play, when you were at grade six, you mentioned? Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, so it was, yeah, it was called Just Around the Corner. And I think that was the first time I sang in front of my school. And I was really nervous because it was kind of a musical. And I remember just feeling very nervous once uh, during rehearsal. And I would always go to my professor to always ask her about how do I develop that character and how to make it more complex because I know that acting isn't just more, isn't just memori memorizing lines. Like there's always more to that. And I wanted to learn more. So I would always have like meet after school with my professors to keep working on that character. And I was very nervous. I was very, very, very nervous. And I, I remember just being scared of like forgetting all my lines. So every single day when I came back to my house, I would reread re the script and keep repeating the lines on my head because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to forget all my lines. But thank God everything went super well. And well, well, what? Please continue. Sorry, please sorry. Please continue. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Um, so I remember just like presenting and playing as, as a girl and singing like in front of the students. And it was such an amazing experience. Like you just get carried away with the play itself um so at the end of the day i, I was stressing i was always stressing a lot <laughs> well, well what was what was your role in that play do you remember yeah um i was basically her name was juliet if i'm not mistaken and i was a, i played it as like a little girl but she was an orphan and and basically, at the end of the play, she got to meet her dad at the end. And it's a very beautiful play. And I remember just the struggle because I'm not an orphan, but I, 
at the end of the day, I'm still representing kids that don't have parents. And I wanted to make that as accurate as possible. I didn't want to misinterpret it in any way. So that's why I would constantly meet with my professor. But I really, I feel that it was a very gratifying experience because being able to work with that character allowed me to fully understand and position myself in another person's shoes and have empathy towards other people and to understand their struggles, even though I'm not going through them myself. So coming forward to now, you study at the University of Southern California. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience yes. over there? Oh my God, um, <laughs> where can I start? I think going, studying at the University of Southern California, I'm not being cheesy, trust me, I'm very honest, has been one of the best decisions I've made in my life. And when I was like in ninth grade, that's when I started doing research about different schools and which were the best wow. schools to focus on acting. And I remember like reading all the curriculums and seeing which one was the one that, I, that fit with me the most, the one I felt most identified. And USC was the one. I, like it's a very, it's a program that fully prepares you in every single aspect. And they have two programs. They have the BA program and they have the BFA program. And I really wanted to get into the BFA program, which when it stands for Bachelor of Fine Arts, and it tends to be very, very strict. But it's the program for you if you want to dedicate the rest of your life to acting. Like, this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I really feel identified with that one because it prepares you, like, in different aspects, as I said before, like movement, voice, acting, uh, critical studies, specifically, like, tech studies, um, screen acting. And it's very rigorous, I do have to say. As I say all the time to my friends at USC, I don't have a life. I'm dead. <laughs> um, but it, it's really something that, that doesn't bother me at all because it's what I love. And it, being able to study what I love at USC, which was the university of my dreams, has been a, one of the best decisions I've made in my life. I love USC. It's very great that you should, it's very, <laughs> exactly, fine on. It's very great that you shared this because a lot of young boys and girls, females and males that want to pursue acting think that it is, it is very easy and it's not that hard. Can you, as much as possible, can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you faced during your study time? Okay, so as I mentioned before, since it's a BFA program and it tends to be very rigorous, I have 18 units per semester. Um, so I usually start my day at 6 a.m. in the morning. I get up, I shower, I eat my breakfast, and then my first class usually tends to be at 8 a.m. Well, yeah, it's 8 a.m. every day. So I start at 8 a.m., but we have to be there minimum. So my sorry, first we class... A, sorry, we had a technical <laughs> glitch, but uh, please continue. You were mentioning your challenges. Yeah, of course. So my first class is at 8 a.m., but I have to wake up earlier, as I mentioned. Like, I usually wake up at 6 a.m., so I have time to get ready. But we have to get there minimum 15 minutes before so we can start, like, getting in, in like, getting a little bit of the gist and taking the environment in and fully concentrate on the classes um, because most of our classes are very abstract. Um, and I start at 8 a.m., we take our first class, and then we go on until like 12, we have an hour to eat, and then we go on until 6. And then at 6, usually we end at 7, sometimes 6, that's when rehearsals start. And rehearsals are two hours long. So, and sometimes they do get extended, it really depends if our movement class also wants us to rehearsal so that to her so that would be another extra hour so we always have to have like our schedule free because it's subject to change um so we have rehearsals and then i usually finish my day at like 9 p.m sometimes 10 it really depends on what do we have to work on and this includes weekends saturday and sunday and once i finish 
I go to cafeteria, get some to, to eat, and that's when I start studying. <laughs> And it's very easy to stay up until late studying because it requires you to learn so much. Like we usually have to read like one, one play per week and like analyze, but not read it once, read it a few more times. So you can find every single detail and incorporate that when you're working with a character. And I would say that's my first challenge because I have to be extremely energetic and and find ways to to maintain like my GPA and fully focus on all of my classes without allowing that tiredness to take over me. And then in regards to to me as a person, I think one of the hardest things is um, in this world of acting, you have to, as I mentioned before, you have to be extremely empathetic. So you can fully represent what what the humanity in general and as accurately as possible. So one of the things our professor constantly emphasizes is that every single personal experience that you go through in life is extremely useful. Like, don't forget about it. Even, even how bad it is, don't forget about it. Just keep it and cherish it because later on you can use it to, to understand another character. And be constantly empathetic towards the struggles that other people that you know might be going through so you can also incorporate that. And and full, at the end of the day, become a better actor. But the problem with that is that when you're too empathetic, which is one of the things I personally struggle with a little bit because I'm overly empathetic, I tend to take every single struggle that every person I know is going through to heart. And it affects me personally and emotionally in general. It affects me a lot. And and just as a person that identifies to be as very optimistic, I used to always like push away whenever I was, I was feeling sad or angry because I know that in my life, like it's, I don't consider that to be productive. But ever since I started getting into this world of acting, there are times that instead of pushing those emotions away, you have to keep them, those emotions of being sadness and angry because that's what makes us as human beings. And ever since I started studying at USC, that's something that I've learned the hard way that I'm, that I'm still working on, but I know that I'll eventually get. So from your experience, I think it's best to say to our dear audience who want to pursue acting is that you need to take this very seriously. As Talia mentioned, it's, it's not a joke. It's no. dealing with your emotions, feelings, and experiences and bringing them onto the stage. Well, thank you, thank yes. you for sharing that. I know that amongst all the hard work that you do and all the projects that you've had and all your accomplishments, you have been involved and are now involved in humanitarian projects as well. Can you talk about those a little bit? I appreciate it. Of course, yes, yes. Um, so I would say that I started to develop that passion towards community services um, ever since I was a little kid, but it was very, very, very strong in ninth grade. Um, when I got to, when I switched schools and I learned that I don't have to have a certain age to start developing my own projects and to help other people that are in need. That's when I started to notice that I might be in this position of privilege and being in this position of privilege can be utilized to help other people in need that have been affected by natural disasters or just misrepresented or not the government, anything. And so when I was in ninth grade, I developed my first community service project called Tutoring Around the Tropics because it was here in Puerto Rico. And... Um, it consisted of tutoring kids of different ages and socioeconomic backgrounds for free. And that was me. And I would go to their houses or we would meet up at the library or they would come to my school, whatever worked for them. And I would help them in every subject, whether it was French, whether it was math, Italian, Spanish, English, whatever. And I would help them in that. And, um, I that's when I learned about this community called Los Naranjos, which was seriously impacted by Hurricane Maria, 
up to the point that most of the families that lived there, um, their houses got flooded because they lived like nearby a river. And due to Hurricane Maria, their houses were completely destroyed. It was a disaster. I, I remember it was a disaster. It was horrible. I was there throughout Hurricane Maria. I, I survived all that. And it, it was, was I can tell you, it was it was so heartbreaking. I remember just leaving my house the first day after Hurricane Maria and seeing my little island where I was born and raised, just in all the debris in the floor, all, all the shops destroyed, all the houses destroyed, people walking around confused. I, I remember just crying because it's devastating. I really love my island. I really love Puerto Rico. And just seeing that, I, it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. So I saw that instance as a great opportunity for me to step in. And sk- kids stopped going to school because their, their schools were destroyed as well. And I believe education is really important in order to make a very big impact around the world. That's why I'm studying at USC. And I saw that as a great opportunity to step in and give and tutor these kids in different academic subjects and help them and i there was this even this one kid that had a hard time learning the multiplying tables and he hated them he hated math and please don't kill me i love math that's my favorite subject i think in another life i was born to be a mathematician anyways (laughs) and what did you do to help him um i started to develop all these different games whether it was like on laptop or just drawings or different tricks that would make multiplying easier and fun for him. Until I remember just explaining like the, the I think it was like the table of six and I teach him his, this trick and he was like, Oh my God, I get it. Like multiplying isn't as bad as I thought. And I was like, I told you it's not that bad. And, and I, I feel that that's what I'm here for, those type of experiences. And they just fill me with joy and happiness and, and a sense of purpose in my life. And that's, as I mentioned before, that's how I started to develop this passion towards community services. And nice. I started working with different communities. I'm on Puerto Rico, um, different ages. I used to visit the elderly and elderly homes and, and bring them donations or just spend time with them on my Sundays. Um, or just visit cancer patients at the hospital. But it wasn't until I got to USC that earthquakes started impacting the island again. And a lot of people started losing their homes again. And and when was that? In January. That was in January, January this year. I'm telling you, I was here as well. Very recent, and I was here. I, I remember just being in my house watching TV and all of a sudden like my couch started like shaking and it was very scary and i remember um just every single day we had like three four earthquakes and it was very scary and that's when the semester started and i had to go back to la but i felt very guilty leaving the island in this detrimental situation and not being able to do anything about it that's when I decided that it was, it was a very good idea to start to develop a project or, or an organization at USC, which is how Vamos Arriba started with the help of my Puerto Rican friend called Sofia. She's the co-founder. And it wasn't until like two weeks ago that we launched our, our first Instagram post. We officially launched the organization and it's basically an Vamos Arriba. In English, it means, um, like let's go up but in puerto rico it's a phrase that stands for as a way to like motivate and encourage each other especially when we're going through devastating circumstances and i saw that as a spectacular name that better that couldn't best encompass all our intentions of helping puerto rico and different latin american countries in need in general and that's how Vama Riva was born. We just worked on our first project this weekend. We drove four hours away. I woke up at 3 a.m., but it was That's a long it. drive. That's a long drive. 
It was very long. Um, but I woke up at 3 a.m. and we got there at like 7 because it was like a four hour drive, like I said. Um, we, but the day before, we bought some groceries that we were able to buy with some donations that USC students and people from Puerto Rico gave us. And we went to Jauco, which was one of the, in, in Guanica, which were two of the municipalities that were severely impacted by the earthquakes. And we got to donate a lot of groceries and hygiene products and backpacks filled with um, face masks for the coronavirus um, that were donated to the families in need. And it was definitely, of, as I, it's, it's, extremely hard to explain like i'm out of words of how happy and grateful i was for this opportunity and just being able to work with this organization it, it really fills me with joy to be able to help other people and give back well i'm sure well, well i'm sure those people will, are also grateful that you and your friend and your organ organization were there to help them so from your experience i think we all learned that no matter how busy one can be, there's always time to give back to the community, right? I think yes. that's a valuable yes. insight that every, everybody, regardless of their age, should pay attention to. So mm -hmm. going to our conclusion, I would like to ask you to give other aspiring actors and actresses, especially actresses, young females, who wanted to pursue this career, just give them some advice and what they should do, how they should think about it. So I come from Puerto Rico, as, as I've been mentioning throughout the, this conversation, and I feel like I've noticed and I feel like the world of acting or the arts in general are not supported as pursuing a career in medicine or law or, or, other, or math in general, for example, just to mention some, like those are the ones that are considered as being the right ones here in Puerto Rico. But if you pursue a career in arts, it's not something that people haven't been exposed to that much. So I feel it's studying at USC, I've been able to gain an insight that I haven't been exposed to before. And that it's something that I wouldn't change for anything in the world. And that I feel that it's something so, so valuable for people to. Yeah, okay. So as I was saying, um, moving to USC has allowed me to gain very valuable insights that I haven't been exposed to before, but it, studying acting has allowed me to be exposed to that. And I feel that that's something that you can't gain with anything, with any other career. And one of that is being empathetic and being in touch with your own emotions and how acting has that power of transforming you into becoming a better person. One of the things that I, that I haven't forgotten that I learned the first semester in my, my tech studies class is that you never judge a character. You never judge a person by their decisions because their decisions have been taken because they feel that that's what is correct. Sure. And we live in a society where people tend to judge each other and criticize the decisions that another person took and they automatically classify them and deem them as bad or or other other respective words that i don't even like to mention because i don't like that but as an actress i've been able to become a better human being because one of the things that it, that I've learned when studying characters and when developing a complex character, right. those lessons when I'm, when I'm working with those characters can be applied to my, on a daily basis. And as I mentioned before, being empathetic and not judging other people's decisions because they took them, because they thought that that was the right thing to do at the moment. And I, 
I remember coming back on, on Christmas to Puerto Rico with all of those lessons that I learned um, as an actress and applying those to my family or my friends and noticing in me how I've grown, have been able to grow as a human being. And it's something that is so amazing and that everybody, at least with taking one acting class, or just focusing on this career, you're not gonna lose anything. Like focusing and becoming an actress, you're not gonna lose. On the contrary, you're going to become a better person and you're going to be more empathetic towards other human beings and you're going to understand the infinite possibilities of human connection. And that is amazing. Like I feel that that is the best thing that you could gain as a human being. And that's, that's what you're going to take with you when you die. And that's what I live here for, to become a better human being every day. And I'm not perfect, I'm not saying I am, but I'm working towards gaining different values and applying them to my life and to applying them when having a conversation with another person, with another person. Um, and that's, that's what I'll be focusing on and every day I'll keep learning and that's what I would say to other aspiring people that want to pursue an, an, a career in acting. Just do it. Just do it and forget for about it. the future. Exactly. Go Just for do it. it. Like, like the Nike slogan, go for it. Go for because, it. <laughs> because you're not going to lose anything. I might understand if you might be scared of maybe not getting a job because yeah, it's a very competitive business. But if you have a passion towards acting and you have your values like ingrained in you and you are very strong and you're not going to change them for anybody or anything, you're going to thrive. That's the reward of it. Well, I, uh, well, I really appreciate you sharing these valuable insights with our audience. And I would like to, Thank you, Talia, for coming on our podcast and letting us interview you on behalf of myself, my co-host, and our audience. Thank you again. And we it was a pleasure speaking with you. And I wish you the best in your career. I wish you the best in your community service duties. And good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> take, take care. Thank you.